Because they know that once you go on vacation, eh, you drop your gloves in Abuja. Then you go to Dubai or Grenada, Bahamas, Barbados. Hey, how can Satan come out and stop somebody where he's that's doing vacation? How? A lot of Christians come back bruised. From day one, once you arrive, power. You move forward, beep, on the back, two. Idiots. <laughs> you left your gloves. We open our hearts to receive from you. Holy Spirit of God, we reverence your majesty. We thank you for your goodness to us always, your faithfulness. And we receive by faith all that you have for us today. We pay attention to your word and we receive with meekness the engrafted word, the fresh word for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So, We've been talking about steps to manifesting your expectations in 2024. If you have missed any, or any part of the series, please go back and get it. And even if you haven't missed it, I would like you to go back and listen. Because I want to make sure that this year will not be like others. I want to make sure that you fulfill God's plan for you this year. For some of you, you will end up achieving a lot more. The reason, the reason is because there's, there's some other things you have not achieved in previous years, which you are meant to have achieved. And so what you have is a pile up. Glory to God. But God is good. And God is able to give you the wisdom, the strategy that you need. The grace to ensure that even if it's a lot, a lot more, much more than what you think you can handle, God will help you so that by the end of this year, you will look back and say, wow, look what the Lord has done. And I told you 10 year achievement in 10 months, it will happen. It's already happening. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So today I want to probably, you know, wrap up the series so we can go into other things with a very important message. Very important. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Hallelujah. All right. Second Timothy chapter 7 and verse 4. I have, what did I say? Seven, four, four, seven. All right, thank you, thank you. I appreciate your help. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. When it's time to help someone now, you will not help the person. It's, it's, it's seven, four, four, seven. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. I have fought the good fight. Watch this. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Anytime there's a faith mission, a faith project, anytime you start a faith project or mission, the only way you'll be able to finish it is by fighting. You will have to fight for every inch of ground. If you don't fight, it doesn't matter what prophecy was given to you. If you don't learn how to fight the good fight, you, will, you, you, you could live a very frustrated life because you'll have a lot of prophecies yet unfulfilled. So every time there's a finishing, every time there is to be a finishing, there must be a what? Fighting. You have to fight. 
Someone say, I have to fight. But you see, the good thing about this fight is not the kind of fight that you are struggling. It's not chicken fight. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. This is a different kind of fight. Hallelujah. This is a good fight. It's a good fight. Why is it a good fight? Why is it a good fight? It's a good fight because you won the victory before the fight started. Can I get a witness here? <clears throat> and somebody will ask, if that's the case, if we've already won the victory before the fight started, then why fight? You have to fight. The reason why you have to fight you're not fighting for the victory. You're fighting for the manifestation of the victory. You already have the victory. But when you take a stance of faith, hallelujah, and when you enforce your convictions, then you'll see the manifestation of what Jesus already died over 2,000 years ago for you to have today. But you have to see it manifested. So you have to fight. The fight is what brings you to a place of manifestation. It is your fight that takes you to a place where you express the realities of God in the natural. It is the fight that allows you to pull it in from being a spiritual reality and pull it into the natural where it becomes a physical manifestation. Because it's from that place of reality in the spirit to physical manifestation that you find opposition. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, spirits. Who will try to stop you from bringing in that reality into a physical manifestation. They'll try to stop you. But you fight. It's a good fight. Because you have authority over your enemy. It's a good fight. Because your power, the power you have by far exceeds the power of your enemy. It's a good fight. Hallelujah. This is not the kind of fight you should lose. Amen? There's some fights that if you lose it, then it's a big shame. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have all the weapons. The weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but what? Mighty. So don't tell me you lost though. Amen? This kind of fight, you lose it, we flog you. Hello, somebody. You lose it, you come to church for what? Goboko. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But as for, I speak Nigerian, Nigerian English, as for, if there will be fight, bros, fight, good day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Only Nigerians speak like, I hope you know, only Nigerians in the whole world. If you go anywhere in the world, go to Antarctica and you hear somebody saying, ask for. Just say, bros, how now? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He says, I have fought the good fight. Therefore, I have what? Finished. God has a mission for you this year. Will you finish it? This time, will you finish it? Will you finish the assignment? Will you, will you complete the assignment this year? Then you must fight. You must fight. You cannot shun the fight. You cannot shy away from the fight. You must fight. I didn't say fight with people. Because some of you, once you heard fight, you say, hey. hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't say fight with people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. Fighting with people is a bad fight. It's a bad fight. It's not the good fight. It's the bad one. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. 
Are you still here with me? Here's how it works, guys. You gain grounds by faith. And then the enemy comes to challenge what you have gained. And if you don't, if you don't resist him, he will take what you gained. So you find somebody takes a few steps and then slacks. And then the enemy comes and takes the grounds you gained, you fought for. And next thing you know, the guy is back. Farther back than where he started from. Because the enemy doesn't play fair. Amen. Go with me to 2 John 1 and 8. 2 John 1 and 8. Glory be to Jesus. I hope you brought your dancing shoes. You did? What about your laughing shoes? Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. Watch this. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we have worked for. So every time I gain new grounds, eh, I am to consolidate. How do I consolidate? You have to consolidate in the sense that you have to make sure the enemy is not able to shift you. If you stand somewhere, don't let them shift you. Hallelujah. Don't let them shift you from the grounds you have gained. You're not going to keep the grounds passively. It's not automatic. Because I've gained grounds, I'm okay. No, you have to actively hold it. They will fight you. They will come after you. And they don't fight fair. And the more grounds you gain, the more fight they fight. And the dirtier it gets. Hallelujah. Look to yourselves that we do not lose the things we, we worked for. But that we may receive what? A full reward. That means if there's a full reward, there's a partial reward. If there's a full reward, that's 100% reward. That means there's 30 fold and there's 60 fold. That means there's 20%. That means you can end up this year and only gain grounds that amounts to 20% of what God intended for you for 2024. That's not your portion. Full reward. Full. Everything God has planned for you in 2024, you will arrive. You will take it. You will achieve it. You will take it. You will possess it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why sometimes, you know, even when you have a testimony, see, you might notice, you know, I'm giving this testimony, but I sense there was much more I was meant to have gotten out of this thing. You know, you're giving a testimony, but it's, it's not, it's half-hearted. Because you know, you sense on the inside, there was much more meant to come. Something went wrong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have to have the mentality of a fighter. That means even when you are sleeping, you are still a fighter. Some of you, when you go to bed, you, 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 you close the fight. That's why they wait for you to go to bed. Have you noticed? They wait for you to go to bed. Then they come while you're sleeping. Because while you're sleeping, as far as you're concerned, the fight is over till morning. For them, the fight starts at night. That means even when you are sleeping, you're in a fighting mode. So when you are sleeping and they show up, you show up with fight. You must show the fight in you. What are you doing here? Come on! They now realize, oh my God, this guy, even while he's sleeping, he's ready. I learned this from an evangelist friend of mine. We stayed in the same flat many years ago. Almost 30 years ago. This guy, you know, I just began to speak in tongues. But this guy was interesting. And this guy was always in the field. Doing evangelical work. Casting out devils and all. So I guess when you're in that kind of uh, atmosphere, you kind of enter a mode. <laughs> because you see these spirits a lot. And you know that these, these people are not... They don't play the way we play. So I was sleeping in one room. I was in another room. I was just here. This is around 1 a.m. He's snoring. Then I'm here in the middle of the snore. 
Kura baba kuse, kalaba kuse, kalaba kuto, bataya. Mm. Then we continue snoring. Kurr, kurr. I had to get up and go and look from the door to be finding out what is going on. I said, what kind of problem are we having here? So I'm looking and just sure enough, you just see him sleeping. Sound asleep. Then he'll just batola buse. I said, hey, we have entered. We have entered another life. I receive. I receive in Jesus' name. What kind of guy? You are a live wire any time of the day. Live wire. Anytime they touch you, they, they, will, it will, they will shock. It will shock them. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Your spirit man should not sleep. Some of you, when you go on vacation, the devil waits for you. This year, Pastor, we're going to Dubai. The devil will just tell his people, one, two, one, two, get ready. <laughs> Dubai, here we come. Because the one that wants you to go on vacation, eh, you drop your gloves in Abuja. Then you go to Dubai or Grenada, Bahamas, Barbados. Hey, that's where demons dwell. Please, don't be annoyed with me if you're from the Barbados. I'm just, I'm just a preacher. I beg. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. They can't wait for you because they know when you get there, your mind is no. How can Satan come and stop somebody where he's that's doing vacation? How? A lot of Christians come back bruised. Because from day one, once you arrive, power. You move forward, whip on the back, two. Idiots. <laughs> you left your gloves. Amen. One of your Christmas time is when they get you. Because after all, we're celebrating Christmas. How can the devil, even, even the devil knows that we celebrate this, the birth of Jesus Christ. Everybody should cool down. They wait for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil roams around seeking whom he may devour all the time. He's always moving. Always, always. Who is not on guard? Whose defenses have dropped? He's looking. Who is not alert? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how do we fight this fight? How do we fight this fight? We have to learn how to fight this fight. 1 Corinthians 9 and 26. How do we fight this fight? You have to become, a pro, you have to become proficient in this fight. It says, therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. All right? Okay, fine. Watch this. Thus I fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. What's he talking about? The good fight. This is how I fight. Not as one who beats the air. Not as one who's punching in the air. While your enemy is on the other side. You are punching on the other side. Misfiring. Hallelujah. How can you fast for 40 days? After the 40 day fast, you came out of the fast and then everything you have in your bank was stolen. Amen? Amrabas came the next day. Hallelujah. You and your wife fought. After 40 days, you lost a child. After 40 days, what's going on here? You are misfiring. I'm not against 40 days. But if you do 40 days, make sure you don't misfire. It is the faith that makes a difference. Not the length of the sacrifice. And faith is very specific. Faith has to become accurate. Epignosis. Accurate knowledge. 
so that when you apply something, you know exactly where you are going. So you have efficiency. Your axe head is sharpened. So you, you use less energy to cut down the tree. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. So how do we fight? How are we going to fight this fight? Look at it, it says, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Somebody say accuracy. You have to be accurate. You have to, in other words, know who your enemy is. And you have to know when you are striking at the enemy and when you are not. Because for instance, I gave an example. When you're fighting with men, you're punching in the air. When you're fighting with flesh, you are not accurate. And if the devil can get you to fight in the flesh, oh my God, he would definitely put you on the ground. Because you're missing him. He's right there on this side, but you're punching something else. You're punching somebody else. He's right here. You're not accurate. Next verse. But I what? Discipline my body. Bring it into what? Subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. In other words, I preach to you, then I'm going home and the devil gives me a start. Boah. So if I'm going to fight, my fight must be accurate. And then my fight must be disciplined. I must be disciplined. I must be accurate. And I must be disciplined. Hallelujah. Discipline means I put my flesh under subjection. I will not allow my flesh to cause me to misfire. Hallelujah. My flesh has to get out of the way. So I am accurate. So when I sense my flesh about to rise up. I take charge. And put it under subjection. Stay there. We're not doing this. We're not going to abuse somebody today. We're not. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not going to nurse, I'm not going to nurse those thoughts of hatred. I won't nurse it. No, I won't. I won't wish evil on somebody. No, I won't. And when the thoughts are getting stronger, do you now embarrass the devil? Okay, I bless him. I bless him. Lord, bless him. The devil will just say, oh, I didn't know it was that serious. You can stop blessing them. I will go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you still here with me? How do I fight this fight? Because you have to fight this fight so you can achieve your expectations in 2024. This year will not be like the other years. This year you will achieve it. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this house. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies Previously made concerning you for EG. 2024 is going to be the year of divine and destiny alignment and great possibilities. Uh -huh. The prophecy came. What next? Look at it. He says, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, by the prophecies, you may wage the good warfare. So the prophecy is a weapon for warfare. So you have the prophecy and you went to bed. 
Because I have prophecy. They've told us what will happen in 2024. So I went to bed. And I slept. And I woke up. I ate ice cream. And I just went and, and I just played around. And I came back and I slept again. Woke up again. Ice cream. Amen? I didn't war. You know how many believers do not understand that you have to wage a good warfare. When the prophecy comes... That's when the fight starts. Because the devil will come to contend with the word. It is a word they spoke of you that he will come to contend with. He wants it not to come to pass. So once the word is spoken, he will arrange. It's very strategic. He will arrange the demonic strata. He will arrange them and say, listen, make sure, frustrate this guy. See that word they spoke concerning him. If it comes to pass, we're in trouble. Make sure, make sure you contend with him. Every time he thinks about the prophecy, every time he takes one step, fire him. So that he will just wonder why this, every time I, I'm, I'm trying to move forward, you know, with this prophecy, my, things, are, things are not working well. You know, let me just leave this thing and go and do the one that I know works. The warfare doesn't start until the prophecy comes. If there's no word from God for you, forget it. No fight. They don't invest their energy in a person without a word. The greater the word, the greater the fight. The greater the contention. Because there's a great word on your life. They will contend. They will contend every level, every season. They will contend until it comes to pass. If you understand what I'm saying, you're not moved again. You get to a place, oh Lord, you know how revelation comes. You may just be shaving and something that God has been trying to get across to you for, for a season, for some time, it just drops. You are just shaving and then you just know that you know, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. It has settled. One day I was shaving and it dropped in me. And I had to speak it out. Nothing in this world can move me. Nothing can move me. The only thing that moves me is the love of God. Nothing else. Which means I'm ready. Bring it. I'm not moved. I'm not moved. Hallelujah. You see, it came as a revelation. That you don't have to be moved by anything. The one that trusts in the Lord is like Mount Zion. Immovable. Immovable. It came as a revelation. So when that kind of re revelation comes to you, what happens next? You cool down. Relax. No panic. No anxiety. No fretting. Hey, hey, hey. How are we going to? No. Nothing moves me. Glory to God. As long as I'm in authority, as long as I exercise my authority, it will come to pass yes. according to the will of God. I'm not moved. Someone said I'm not moved. Say the only thing that moves me is the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Immovable. Immovable. Unshakable, unshakable, unshakable. Hallelujah. Bad news doesn't move me. It doesn't. Glory to God. Because I know good news is coming. You see, the good news coming huh, will overwhelm the bad news. So good news is not the absence of bad news. Good news prevails because it overwhelms the forces of bad news. So bad news will come, but good news will come. Oh my God, I don't know if I have a witness here. So that means that when the bad news comes, I'm not moved. Because I know good news is coming. Good news is coming now. So no matter what happens in, the, in this atmosphere, if it's a bad thing that happened, I'm not, I'm not moved. Why? Something good is coming. Something good is right around the corner. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And when it comes, it will boomerang every bad thing around. Can I get a witness here? 
Somebody says something good is coming. Someone said good news is coming. Good news is on the way. Good news is on the way. This is how this is how the Lord showed me this thing. The Lord showed me bad news is conveyed by satanic forces. They love it. That's why you watch some of these stations. They thrive on bad news. So satanic forces will, will, will be moving with bad news. But if you look behind them, you will see huge angels coming with good news. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan doesn't want you to see the ones coming, the good news. So he wants to focus on the bad news. So that when the bad news comes, you are consumed. And Satan wants it to, he overblows, he blows things out of proportion. So you're just there like, kai, kai, kai. And then you're no longer looking and seeing what is coming. No more expectation. And they need your expectation. That was one of the reasons you come to church. We're here to re-inspire your hope. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. He says, my son, Timothy, you're coming up, but I need you to understand something. I gave you some prophecies. Hmm? Let me show you what to do with the prophecies. Use them as weapon and fight. Fight for them to come to pass. But why should I fight for them to come to pass when God has spoken? Yes, God has spoken, but have you spoken? The other side of the equation is not complete. The good warfare is a good fight. Next verse. Having faith and a good conscience. The good fight requires a good conscience. Amen? What does that mean? Let me break it down. It is hard to fight the good fight when you're living a life of compromise. God is trying to help you, but you are not helping yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to me, very hard for you hmm, to speak against the devil hmm, when you are sleeping with the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are in bed with the devil, but you have mouth. The bad conscience, your conscience is affected. Your conscience needs to be clear so that when you speak a word, and clear conscience doesn't mean you've not made any mistakes. It means you have repented. But as long as you're in that life, you're compromising. You're compromising. You will notice that your mouth is not strong again now. Hallelujah. Because you're compromising. It weakens your faith. Look at what it does. It says, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered what? Shipwreck. The faith has suffered shipwreck. Because of a bad conscience. Bad conscience. This is why, please, be quick to repent. Yeah. Don't waste time. And make sure, don't ever get to the place where a compromised life doesn't make you feel bad. You should feel bad. Because you are compromising. You're going against God's expectations. You shouldn't feel okay. If you get to the point where you are okay, that means your conscience is weak. If you're not doing something right, continuously, you should be disturbed. Keep your conscience tender. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's take a short break. Some of you are looking too serious. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Do as if you are drinking something. Say, ha, ha, ha. You just drank it. So you've taken the revelation. It has entered. 
It's too late now. Say amen. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Glory to God. Say amen. amen. This year will be your best year thus far. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me passion translation. Passion. Passion. Let's have some passion. Verse 18. Uh, Psalm 1 verse 1. How now? First Timothy 1 18. First Timothy 1 and 18. Passion. All right. It, next verse. Next verse. Give me next verse quickly. So, Timothy, my son, I am trusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life, right? And are now in the process of fulfillment in this great work of ministry. Watch this. In keeping with the prophecies spoken over you, with this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith. Oh, use your use the prophets as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith with a clean conscience. For there are many who reject these virtues and are now destitute of the true faith. Next line. He mentions their names. Leave them. Leave them. Leave those people. Hallelujah. The good fight requires a good conscience. Good conscience, good fight. First Timothy 6. First Timothy 6, verse 11. These are instructions. This is ins these are instructions for 2024. Amen? Yeah. If you follow these instructions... You must come back with a testimony. Must. 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 Hallelujah. But you, O oh man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Next verse. Fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The good fight, the good fight requires what? Good conscience. It also requires what? Good confession. You have to speak. Oh. See this fight? You cannot be quiet. Amen? But you have to speak the good speech. The good confession. There's not, ev not every talk is a good confession. Especially when you're under duress. That is when it is, it is possible for you to say something that is not a good confession. Because you're under pressure. You might exclaim because of what you saw. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm dying. That's not a good confession. He's telling you whatever kind of pressure surrounds you, cool down. Cool. Process. Listen. God will give you a word. When you speak that word, that's a good confession. That's the word that will help you overcome your enemies. Are you with me? If you're the kind of person that as soon as there's a problem, you react quickly, you will say the wrong thing. They call it Foot and mouth disease. You will put your foot inside your mouth. You have said something and, hey, why did I even say that? Because you didn't wait. You should have been patient. You reacted. You overreacted. Hallelujah. You, you said something which was not a good confession. 
Amen. Now look at what it says here. It says, it says, having have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. All right? Next verse. Watch this. It says, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things. And before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession? This good confession. We have an example to follow. When Jesus was face to face with Pilate, when Pilate came to challenge his authority, he spoke, but he was very deliberate. He didn't just speak, even though he knew he was about to be killed. He spoke the right words. We have to learn. Amen? Every time you speak, make sure that you're speaking the right words. Don't just talk. Even if you have to be quiet, be quiet. Especially in conversations. When everybody's free and just jiving. Don't jive. Because every word you say will be counted. To be weighed. The spiritual world weighs your words. And let me tell you somebody who will listen to every word you are saying. Satan. He's, he's, he's legalistic. Just that you said it is enough for him. He will bombard you. And he will say, he said it now. Did you not hear what he said? He said it. They'll be telling the angels that you said it. Even if it's joke. Hey, I just love you to death. What is that? Why must death come inside love? See how vocabulary is polluted. And we don't even know it. We're just saying things. And Satan will just come. You heard it now? He said he loves her to death. Which means either she will die or he will die. Somebody must die. <laughs> Glory to God. And people who love like that and talk like that, somebody ends up dying. <laughs> you know, people, some love, there's a kind of love that can kill somebody. Have you watched uh, this movie, Fatal Attraction? That's the kind of love that kills people. Hallelujah. Let me leave it. <laughs> Let me watch my words. Amen. All right. Go to John 18 quickly. John 18 verse 33. Is somebody getting something? John 18 verse 33. Okay, here we, here we go. Watch this. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again. Called Jesus and said to him, listen, listen, listen. You know, these guys are calling you king of the Jews. Obviously, they're, obviously they're mocking him. It's a mockery. And they're using, using, using that as a basis, right, for demanding his crucifixion. In other words, this man is organizing a coup. We have a king, go, but he says he's the king. Hallelujah. They will say things like, we have only one king, Caesar. Meanwhile, they personally did not like Caesar. And we're always in rebellion against Caesar. But now they're looking for an excuse. So he comes in and says, are you the king of the Jews? What a trick question. You can't just answer anyhow. Watch this. Next verse. Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Kai, wisdom past wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wisdom past wisdom. I'm sure when Pilate heard this one, I was like, what? What are you saying? He just demoralized him. Be careful what you say. If you pause, the Holy Ghost will give it to you. Your enemies will be confounded. 
There's a way you answer people, eh? they get confused. Yeah. They get confused. Because they weren't expecting that. They were expecting you to go use enticing words of man's wisdom and turn and twist and turn and twist. And you went boom. Next verse. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? <laughs> He's confused. We know you're not a Jew now. Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Watch this. He asked him, what have you done? He's saying something else. It's not necessarily what they ask you that you should answer. Please, now. <laughs> Follow the life of Jesus Christ. They will ask him something. He will say something else. You, they ask you, you, you go answer them. No. What are you going to say? What the Spirit puts in your heart? Hallelujah. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now, my kingdom is not from here. Hmm. Kingdom. Kingdom. Are you a king then? Are you a king? She just answered, you say rightly. In other words, you are the one that said it. You say rightly that I'm a king. Kai! Are you understanding what's going on here? This is wisdom of the rulers versus the wisdom of God. Because he's waiting for God to supply weapon. Because what you say is a weapon. Yeah. You say rightly that I'm a king. You say rightly that I'm a king. Are you a king? You say rightly I'm a king. Watch this now. For this cause I was born. Hey. The, the atmosphere will shift. Once he said this, the atmosphere shifted. Because the angels were not ready. Because the kingdom has been pronounced. For this cause I was born. For this cause I have come into this world. That I should be a witness to the truth. Hey. Pilate is now the one that he's, he's now leading Pilate. Before Pilate wanted to lead him somewhere, he's now the one saying, follow me. Pilate is just moving like Momo, just anywhere he goes, he will just take him. Pilate is answering him. He's now making Pilate say things. Look at the next verse. Everyone who is of the truth, hears my voice. Next verse. Pilate said, what is truth? Ah! And with this, he went away. He said, when they said this, he went out. In other words, he didn't even know what he was saying. What is truth? Oh, man, I'm, this, guy's, this guy's confusing my life, man. Let's go. May your speech confound your enemies in 2024. May your speech confuse your adversaries in 2024. When you speak, let there be confusion in the enemy's camp. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I went for an interview many years ago. They asked me a trick question. I told them I was going to Bible school. They looked at me and said, when you finish, what are you going to do? Because what people do is when they finish school, they slip into the system. They stay back. So that kind of question can put you off. off. And I didn't know what she was going to ask me. But as, as she was finishing the question, I heard it in my spirit. I said, when I finish, I will preach the gospel. She was confused. She didn't know whether, I was, are you going to preach it in America? Are you going to preach it? Where are you going to preach I said, I'll preach the gospel. She looked at me. I said, okay. Bah, bah, bah. Come back to your visa. Finish. When your enemy is confused, they can't fight. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. How do I know what to say? The Holy Ghost will give you. That's why you pay attention. Pay attention. There will be an impression in your spirit. You, are, you see, speaking the good word is also an act of faith. Because you're expecting to hear the right word from God. Sometimes the right word is just a simple word. What, is, what about this and this and this and this? No. How about this one? Yes. If you say anything else, 
you will use your own mouth and put yourself in a trap. Some of you talk too much. They didn't ask you what your wife does. They asked you what is your wife's name. What is my wife's name? Ndidi. Pause. That pause is strategic. The enemy uses pause to pull you, pull something out of you you're not supposed to say. Uncomfortable silence. Learn to master the silence. When is a pause? You remain paused. They're looking at you. Look at them. Okay, okay, okay. You say your wife's name is Didi? I say, yeah. Because what you're supposed to do is, my wife's name is Didi, but she, she went to university of, and she did it, and she did it. Then say, oh, your wife did so, well, how come you are now, blah, blah, blah. You, you just, you're like, they've got you. How many children do you have? Four. Know what they're waiting for? Two were born in Nigeria, two were born in America. <laughs> oh. Two were born in America. All right, let's know. Let's have some information. That's why you put yourself in trouble. Glory to God. I see, well, see, well, see that moment while you're having that, that discussion, that interaction. There's warfare. There is. There's, there's spiritual intensity. So your pause is to your favor. When you pause, it is helping you because your side is greater than them. But when you panic and start talking, even the angel will be like, oh, so what kind of... Uh, we're trying to help somebody. Amen. Amen. Husband and wife, you're having discussion. Sometimes it's warfare. Yeah. Don't talk too much. Say the right thing. I'm going to let him have it. No. If you let him have it, Satan will let you have it. But, 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 look at, look at what he said to me. Eh? Eh? No, 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 no. We must set the record straight. Which record? I'm talking to somebody. You're planning to set the record straight tonight. The Lord said, leave that record. <laughs> Rap with that record. Leave it. Leave it. Say amen. Where was I? Pilate. Titus 2 6, quickly. Titus 2 6. I'm closing. What does that mean? That means I'm in the process. <laughs> it's a process. Everything in life is the processes. Hallelujah. When the pilot tells you to put your seat belts and tells the air hosts and hostesses to sit down that they're about to land, have you noticed how long it takes after they finish speaking? I'm not saying anything. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm just stating facts. Say amen. Glory to God. All right. Watch this. Two, Titus 2.6. Likewise, exhort the young men. Because they're the ones that have the habit of just being too quick. He says, exhort the young men to be sober-minded. Come. Next verse, watch this. In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility. Watch this, next verse. A sound speech that cannot be condemned. That one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. They can't, they don't have a response. Because you calm down and you give a sound response. Speech is a very important part of warfare. Learn how to speak well. I'm not talking about grammar. 
Hallelujah. Precision. Precision. Accuracy. Sometimes brevity. Until your time comes when you're given the liberty to now speak and explain yourself. And then you're not, you're not the one in charge. Everybody's now listening to you because they've given you the floor. Don't take the floor before your time. Hallelujah. Or else you get embarrassed. All right. Second Corinthians 10 verse 4. The plane is getting closer to the roadway. Second Corinthians 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Next verse, watch this. Casting down arguments. The original says imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought, every thought must be brought into captivity. Every thought. Don't allow any thought to escape. You see, this, the main fight is where? In the mind. The main battleground is in the mind. Battles are won or lost in the mind. Before you came out, you have either won or lost. When you allow that kind of reasoning to come into your mind and you began to entertain it and you began to receive it, you began to lose. Because the enemy is a master of manipulation. He's a, he's a master of enticement. He can entice you. He can convince you you're a fool. Even if God says you're wise, he would convince you you're a fool. He can convince you you're a failure. He can convince the most beautiful person that you are, you are the most ugly. And they will believe it. Cast down. Cast down. Cast down. Cast down. This year, please. Cast down. Any thought that comes that doesn't measure up with your expectation in Christ, cast it down. How do I cast down? Words. Can't escape words. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? Is somebody ready for warfare? Are you sure you're ready? This year will be different too. They will come oh. They will come. They will come. But you must be ready. Next verse, quickly. Next verse. Being ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah. You see that time they're coming at you and coming at you and coming at you. Eh? You cast down. And you cast down. And you cast down. And they're hoping that it can overwhelm you with bombardment. But you, you, stand, you stand your ground. You stand your ground. After a while, they have to back off. Because what you're doing is called resistance. And if you resist the enemy, he must flee. So they back off. And there's relief. When there's relief, don't let them go too far. Come back here! Let me tell you something. Let me tell you who I am. I'm a son of God. My name is Andrew Chukwemeko Sapwe, son of God. Hear me well. I'm not intimidated. I'm not afraid of you. I will never be afraid of you. I will not die. I will live to declare the glory of God. Let me inform you, your destiny is hellfire in case you have forgotten. Next time you come here, get ready. Bring more if possible. I will burn you with fire. Listen, you see, you see, you have to revenge. They can't stand it. They can't. When you're speaking like that, they're tormented. When you're talking, they don't like, hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Speak up. Speak up. Say this year, let me tell you, you demons of hell, this year will not pass me by. I'm going to grab it. Everything the Lord has spoken to me concerning 2024, it will come to pass. It must come to pass. I will make it come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Talk like this. Talk like this. Because it affects you, it affects the enemy, it affects the atmosphere. And also in line with this, learn how to shout the shout of faith. 
There's a shout of faith. When you build your momentum, man, you have to shout. You see, this kind of shout, eh, is difficult to do inside the house. With neighbors and all. Let me tell you how I do my own. I enter the car. And I drive. Because even if I shout in the car, people will hear me. It's not a small shout. I will drive. Go on one of these express, these long roads in Abuja here. There are many. Just put on the wind, put up the windows. Hey! 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 Everyone must come down. Hey! This is warfare. You, you, you people think warfare is a uh, biscuit. You think it's biscuit? There are times you shout away symptoms. Hey! Every symptom, hear me. Your time has come. You must go now. Hey! So you can't shout that this in the house now. Because even your, your spouse will be like, ah, it has happened though. I didn't know it was so serious like this that we have reached. Your children will be afraid. Your neighbors will call. We decide that the time has come for them to call police. That they've lost it. Just imagine your neighbor hears you shouting, Hey! They'll say, yeah, they have lost it. Aromenta. <laughs> this is casting down. You are casting it down. You are forcefully casting it down. Your husband is fooling around. Don't fight your husband. Shout. Go somewhere. Hey! You this strange woman! Hey! Where she is, she'll be hearing the shouts. She'll hear the shouts. She will see your husband's face and then see your face and then see one big angel. She will take off the police. My relationship with you is causing me too much stress. It's affecting my mind. You and your husband should go. You know this is what I do. You know I'm not just preaching. You know, you can see I'm doing it by experience. I'm not just doing it by, this is not the first time. You can see this is not the first time I'm doing it. <laughs> you can see I'm seasoned in this, in this business. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many symptoms have I shouted away? Because some of these things don't answer except to force. Why would God tell them to shout and the wall will come down? Why? There's something about the shout of faith. It activates the forces of heaven. It drives the enemy. It confuses the enemy. Hallelujah. All right. Acts 15, 36. We're going to do something, then we're going to shout. All right? Acts 15, 36. Can I have a chair, please? Up here, just a chair. I did a chair up here. Maybe not the black one. Let me have more. I want the red ones. I want the red one. Just put it up there. <clears throat> There's an instruction we have to follow. Just right here. <clears throat> In between, yeah. Thank you. Acts 15, verse 36. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. That's a mission. They're embarking on a mission. All right? Let's go. Let's go back. There are many places they've been to. Many places they've planted churches. So let's go back. Let's go and examine our work. Let's go and see how the brethren are doing. So they started off. Go to Acts 16 verse 6. Acts 16, verse 6. Now, 
Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now, I don't have time to explain all this, but if you look back at the context, you will see that it's not as if they heard an audible voice. They had a strong impression in their spirit. Have you noticed there are times when maybe you're about to do something or you think of doing something and what you have on the inside is like a red light? Everything else might even look okay on the outside, but like there's a red light on the inside. It's an impression. It's an impression. An impression was so strong that how they interpreted it and articulated it is that they were forbidden. You know, was this check is so strong, they are forbidding us from going here. Don't even go there. You see, people live their lives, they don't follow, they don't follow the Holy Ghost. Sometimes people die because they didn't follow the Holy Spirit. You had a check and you still went. Sometimes, even circumstances, God will start to shape circumstances to try to stop you. And some people are so stubborn, they will go. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. One of the things that, that annoys me is when you go to the airport, hmm, and then you have people, and then they tell you uh, the, the, the flight is uh, maybe delayed for a technical reason or whatever, all right? Fine like that. Okay, fine. You want to go on time, right? But there's a situation where, I remember, you entered the plane, and they were wasting time, and they told you they have a problem. And somebody's complaining, oh, move now, we, we have to catch, they said they have a problem. There's no stupidity. And sometimes the pilots are put under pressure by the people. He knows they shouldn't fly. That's how one day we took off. And I knew the man knew we shouldn't fly. And they were trying to delay. But because of me, I'm telling you, something happened. I know it's because of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a covenant now. The plane took off. I was going. Ten minutes into the flight, the guy did like this. Like this. Then it stabilized. What does that mean? U turn. I just kept quiet. I'm going. The man announced there's a serious technical problem. If we continue, we will not make it to Lagos. We need to get back to Abuja quickly. All those that were shouting before that, what are we wasting time? Wasting time. Everybody was quiet. No sound. I was amazed. No sound. No pim. Because we have about 10 minutes left to go back home. So there's a technical problem. So between now and getting back to Abuja, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we now landed, come and see clapping. Hey. Clapping and songs of praise. Songs of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I get to an airport, I'm waiting for my flight, and they get to a point where they say they had to cancel it for some, I'm not moved. I'm not moved though. If I need to go home, I go home. Amen? The appointment is not life and death. It's not heaven I'm going for. I'm not going, it's not heaven. Exactly. Hallelujah. There's a certain guy many years ago that was trying to get to the airport to catch his friends in a private, private plane flight to Abuja. Everything went against him going for that flight. Everything. Plus heavy traffic from nowhere. The plane started taking off on the runway because it was too late. Hmm? The plane was about to take off when he got into the airport, finally. He called them and said, please, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, I'm here. They stopped, turned around and came back, picked him up, took off and crashed. True story. I know the person. What's your problem? And it's party that going for party. Be, be, have some small spiritual intelligence. God, by his mercy, is trying to save your life. And you are still pushing it. They 
were what? Forbidden. That could have been how Paul would die. You say, ah, oh, the great Paul apostle, he died. No, he didn't just die. He disobeyed God. They were forbidden. Next verse. Watch this. Next verse. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the spirit again did not what? Permit them. He said, no, don't go there. <laughs> but you know how Paul is. By this time, Paul, there's no what? We need to go into intense prayer. We need to seek the Lord. Amen? Bible scholars tell us that if they had gone into any of those places at that time, they may not have made it back alive. Next verse. So passing by Amicia, they came down to Troas. Next verse. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. Paul is a prayer warrior. He prays. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to us. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Next verse. Now after we had seen the vision, he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. There was no check anymore. Amen. The Lord said this to me this week. For many of you, hmm, let me say many of us, because we're all together. The problem is always the next step. The next step. The most important step in your life is the next one. It's not the one you're going to take in six months' time. It's the next step. It can take you closer or it can take you away. The next step. We are ready for 2024. You have a great heart in you, a great vision for 2024. God will do amazing things for you. He has planned it, pre-planned it. What is most important now is the next step. So I, I, had, I had a vision in my spirit. Hallelujah. I saw myself. I came and sat here like this. And I said, we're going to pray for a few minutes in tongues. And as we pray, it will show you the next step. The impression may come now. It may come later. But our focus now is one focus. The next step. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you are about to take some steps. You will have to change it. Are you ready? Don't stand up. Sit down. Later, if you feel impressed to stand up, fine. You want to lie down, fine. But now we're going to sit down. This is not jagger, 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 jagger. This is you are praying and you are listening. Are you ready? Father, we thank you. We thank you. Just as you showed me. I'm just obeying you as you showed me. Thank you. We ask for the next step. The next step along the pathway of fulfilling your plan. For 2024. The next step. The next step. Thank you. And we receive it by faith. We receive it by faith. Shandala Makushek. 